In January 2020, Kensington Palace put out a joint statement purportedly from both Harry and William, pushing back against claims that the elder prince had bullied his brother. The Duke of Sussex writes in his autobiography of the statement, No one had asked me for permission to put my name to a statement like that. And I rang M and I told her, and she burst into floods of tears. Because within four hours they were happy to lie to protect my brother. And yet for three years they were never willing to tell the truth to protect us. Likewise, Meghan's characterization of the extent to which she was not protected by Crown Inc. in the face of negative claims such as that she had made Kate cry during bridesmaid dress fittings. Ladies of the flies? Oh dear, here we go again. (laughs) The Duchess told Oprah that the opposite had happened, a scene that left the Duchess, as Harry writes in Spare, on the floor, sobbing. All of these claims about the palace and the press, to some degree, got a bit lost in the slipstream, given the couple's other more sensational claims, such as that there had been concerns and conversations about their unborn first child's skin color. But the events of the last 36 hours have cast all of this in a new light. Oh boy, look, (laughs) the opinion writer has had an epiphany. Wow, she's stunned. She works there. She knows what they do. She knows that their opinion, the good articles, the positive light, the bad articles, the negative light, it's all up for grabs. The horse trading that goes on behind the scenes to craft whatever narrative the most powerful entities choose to promote choose to promote the same article, the same headline, two different names within the space of a week. How? How are you still allowed to call yourselves a newspaper? How are you still able to claim it's journalism when it's just what we do on social media? It's infotainment. Maybe there's some elements where real people's names are used, but it doesn't make it any more true. It simply doesn't. And if there's nothing else that I'm attempting to do with my posts, it's just to celebrate discernment. Celebrate, is this, does this even make sense? Does this picture look like something that a real person would, it, This does this look like it's based on a real event and a real gathering of humans? Or is this artificial intelligence? Is it Colin, Ian, and Ewan, the interns, back on mid-journey? Back on chat GPT, funning all of us with fraud. Big picture, William and Kate's entire handling of the princess's sick leave since she went, since she underwent abdominal surgery in January with her being sequestered away in their Windsor and Norfolk properties, which one, to recuperate like some wan 19th century damsel has felt obdurate and blatantly disregarding a public feeling the prince of wales was the prince of wales is simply protecting his wife the palace line has gone and will continue to do so no matter how much the hoi polloi and their overworked scrolling thumbs angrily post and pout and get in a strop now why are people on social media any angrier than this chick who's trying desperately to keep her job with these inadequate opinions and less than journalistic standards for filling pages with empty words. Please tell me, it's embarrassing to read this woman's column again and again, and it's just, oh my gosh, it's the journalistic equivalent of artificial sugar. There's nothing to it. It, There's nothing to it. It's complex distraction. It doesn't illuminate facts. It's her flimsy opinion. And we can see the value judgments. Traditional media, good. Social media, bad. But if it weren't for social media, those fake pictures would still be being circulated as fact. When everyone's concern is simply for the health, welfare, and safety of Kate Middleton and her children. Where are they? Why can't we see them? What's going on? Right? Where, where, where are her family? Why isn't Thomas Kingston's 
family having an opinion about any of this. Like, I understand grieving, but there seems to be some sort of odd crisis, in my humble opinion. However, then on Sunday, Kate and William released an official image of her with their three kids, a seemingly sweet move, which instead blew up like a powder keg left next to one of Fergie's Elang Elang candles. I didn't know Homegirl had candles. Within 12 hours of it being made public, five major news agencies, Getty, Reuters, the Associated Press, and AFP, which I guess is Agence France Press, and the Press Association issued a kill notice on the grounds that it had been manipulated. Now, you missed a step, hon. Before they issued the kill notice, guess who piped up? Guess which people went onto their social media to point out the suspicious elements of that photo? Social media. Give credit where it's due. And I'm holding my tongue not to use a slur. (laughs) It didn't happen because of them. It happened because of social media critics, which include expert photographers, people who are very learned when it comes to both artificial intelligence, all of those apps, Photoshop, Illustrator, the whole Adobe suite, right? And we see now that Adobe's stock is going sky high because of the increased interest in how do you hmm, retouch, sweeten, improve photos, right? That's a different level than completely jigsawing and cutting out someone and adding and flipping and reclothing people in a photo. You can't produce the original. It was the, it was the tidal wave, the tsunami, in fact, of critique that drove those major news agencies to withdraw the photo they had spread over social media on UK Mother's Day like wildfire, as if it was real. And without the critique, both the Murdoch owned and all the other newspapers worldwide will would still be pushing that fake photo. And we still see it being shared around as if this whole controversy and fraud had not been identified and remedied with a kill notice. On Monday morning, UK time, the princess was forced into the highly embarrassing and never before seen position of having to issue a public apology And just like that, there we have it, cold, hard confirmation that what the royal family feeds the public is tweaked and fondled with and manhandled to suit them. Well, those are very exciting verbs. (laughs) What? Sis, maybe you need a rose in your life and not the kind that lives in Norfolk. To some degree, grips must be gotten here. There is not a celebrity, politician, or two-bit wannabe plant-fluencer who does not clean up images before they post them. We live in a perennially filtered age of media consumption. So, too, there have been instances before of the royal family putting out some pretty crude photoshoppery that a wary or knowing eye could easily discern had been twiddled with. For example, the image of the late queen and ten grandchildren and great-grandchildren incredibly all looking at the camera, or the portrait shared by the palace to mark Prince Philip's 99th birthday in which Her Late Majesty's hand looks like it has been oohooed on. I think oohoo is glue. However, what this Kate rigmarole is all about is trust. For weeks now, the trust in Kensington Palace has been eroded chunk by chunk, minute by minute, and with an Easter Island-like resolutely silent royal outfit. The internet started to come up with their own dubious extreme and preposterous conclusions about what was going on. No. The internet. Regular adults. Responsible, thoughtful, insightful, who have social media raised appropriate questions about a faked image. That the Traditional journalistic outlets had not caught. That's why the journalistic, all the press agencies had to backtrack. Why? Because of the hue and cry and the very accurate critique coming from social media. 